And joining us now is Vince Colonnese, editorial director at The Daily Caller. Vince, welcome back. So great to see you. Um, as Thank we you. just heard earlier, President Biden uh, gave his speech this morning about January 6th. I want to get your thoughts on his remarks and the overall tone of his comments. Well, I was disappointed fundamentally in how dishonest his remarks were, as well as the vice president of the United States. Uh, she started, Kamala Harris did, uh, and she compared last year, January 6, 2021, to the events of 9-11 and December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor. Uh, of course, those two events are no comparison to the events of January 6. In fact, uh, many thousands of American lives were lost during those two dates, and a multi-year war uh, ensued in the wake of those events, wherein many more American lives were lost. There's just no comparison here, and um, and I'm, I'm just disheartened that any American politician would try and make one. That said, the use of January 6 as a mythological device is very important to Joe Biden and the Democrats, because at this moment, they have very little to run on by way of success. Remember, Joe Biden, as a presidential candidate, ran with the promise that he would shut down the coronavirus. That, of course, is not true. We've just had record numbers of cases in the United States, and many more lives have been lost during the time that Joe Biden has been president of the United States rather than his predecessor. That kind of record is the kind of thing that's haunting Democrats right now. And so understand, we're entering a very tough midterm calendar for Democrats, and they need something to run on. They're, they're cracking open an old playbook. They'd like to run against Trump. Trump is a private citizen, not a guy who's right now even announced for any political office, but it's important to them, they think, to run against him. This is all part of that today. I think these are theatrics designed to create a sense of fear and uh, to draw people to the side of the Democrat Party. We'll see if it works. Yeah, Vince, I was going to say, it was really very pointed, that speech today, and it would have been a good opportunity to take the time to help move the country forward. Your thoughts? I, I think that this served the opposite purpose. I think that this was a wedge today. It was a divisive statement meant to rally the base, not to unify the country. Uh, you know, I was writing notes this morning about what to expect based truth. on sort of the excerpts of the speech that were coming out ahead of Joe Biden uh, actually speaking. And I wrote down Biden intends to give speech, you know, a speech attacking Donald Trump in order to unify the country. What? How is that, how is that going to work? And that seemed to be what, how the White House was representing today's events. This was a deeply partisan affair. Now, there are, this, by the way, none of this is an excuse for rioting in the Capitol on January 6. But in order to give a speech where you claim that you're going to be honest about those events, you truly need to be honest. Uh, and you need to work with the American people on moving the country forward. That's not what this was today. I think this set us back. Uh, tomorrow, the Supreme Court is actually set to hear oral arguments over the Biden administration's vaccine mandate. I'm curious, what are your expectations for this case? Well, we'll see. You know, we've had a number of judges so far, and the reason it's made its way up to the Supreme Court, say that the Biden administration has run either a foul of the Constitution or the law itself. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the mandates that it's imposed, on um, a variety of people from, you know, companies that have over 100 employees have been subjected to a Biden administration mandate, healthcare workers across the country subjected to a Biden administration mandate, federal workers and federal contractors as well, a vaccination mandate. Now, the limits on that, I mean, it's, I, I, I think, should be obvious to a lot of people. One, it's like, wow, the government doesn't really have this much power over what you inject into your body. And can the president just at a snap of his fingers make that decree? Additionally, on what rational basis is it, being, is it being done? How is it that you would force a truck driver who works for, you know, a big company with hundreds of employees, but is principally in his truck all day long by himself? Why is that guy being subjected to a vaccine mandate when he poses no risk to anyone else and he doesn't face one meaningfully to himself? These are all good, important questions, and I hope they get resolved in the interest of liberty uh, in the United States Supreme Court. COVID. You know, we'll see what happens with it. The White House at this moment, uh, Tracy, seems to be, seems to be, we're already seeing news reports that they seem to be ready to kind of surrender to it, that they don't really actually know how to conquer it. Because again, this is really nature. You can't just arrest nature. Uh, and they think, well, hopefully this is mild enough, this latest variant, Omicron, and uh, maybe it'll run its course and help us get past whatever uh, ill effects the pandemic might still have in store for us. Yeah, we hope so. And getting a lot of mixed messages there. Vince, great to get your perspective on everything. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Tracy, nice to see you. Thank you.